everyone, welcome back. Today's recipe, I am making shredded beef tostadas. I'm a tostada gal, love those. And I'm gonna be making this in the Instant Pot so it can be put together on a weeknight, nice and quick, well, relatively quick. It's gonna take about maybe an hour in the Instant Pot to cook our beef. And I tell you, I've got a hack for my refried beans that are going on our tostada that you're gonna love. We're gonna be able to do these really quick and add some really great flavor. I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right after our chef joke. All right, here's our first chef joke of the day, and we'll have another one just a little bit later. What is a magician's favorite Mexican dish? Tostada. So if you don't have an Instant Pot or a pressure cooker, can you still make this? Well, of course. You can use a slow cooker, cook it on low for six, seven hours, or on high for at least four hours. You know, you gotta get that beef nice and tender so you can shred it, all right? So, and if you don't have a slow cooker, you can still do it on the stove in a stock pot. And there you'd probably cook it, just you know, simmer it real low with the lid on it for about two and a half hours until that meat, again, is tender. So to start, we're gonna work on our shredded beef. So I have a chuck roast here that I patted dry with some paper towels. And then since it's such a nice big piece, this is less than three pounds, it's I think, or 2.4. I'm gonna just cut it in half just so it's a little bit smaller, easier to handle. I'm gonna season it with some salt, and pepper overall. So I have my Instant Pot on saute right now. I'm gonna take some avocado oil and put in about a tablespoon or so in the bottom of the pot. And you can see when that starts to get hot. So what I'm gonna do is place my meat in there and just let it sear. I'm gonna let that sear maybe a couple of minutes on each side and I'm gonna rotate the pieces. So every couple of minutes, rotate the meat. Once we get all the sides of the meat brown, I'm gonna take it out of the pot and set it on a plate. So inside the pot here, you're gonna see these brown bits in the bottom and that's very good. We want that and that's gonna create some flavor. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of more of the avocado oil to heat up and we're gonna saute our onions and our jalapeno. I've got diced onions here, it's a super fine dice, and the same goes with the jalapenos. You know, you wanna make sure you don't touch your skin when you're cutting these up, because they will burn, especially if you were to touch your eyes. You don't wanna do that. And then we're just gonna saute this, and we're gonna try and pick up all that brown goodness on the bottom of the pan. And if we don't get it right now, we'll get it later when we deglaze. So we're gonna saute these for just about maybe four or five minutes. Once the onions and the jalapeno are done, turn off the Instant Pot and add some garlic. I have some minced garlic here, many cloves, probably about five or six. You can get the written ingredient list in the description of this video. So go ahead and check that out and you'll see everything there you need. And let that just, the heat from the, the pan is definitely hot enough to make the garlic fragrant. It smells wonderful. All right, so now I'm gonna turn the Instant Pot back on to saute and I'm gonna add the orange juice. Start giving that a stir, and I'm gonna add some beef broth. If you have chicken broth, you can use that as well. It's not gonna be a big deal if you don't have it. So I have some beef broth here that I'm gonna add. And now we're just, I'm scraping the bottom of that pot to get all that brown goodness up from the bottom, okay? So just scrape it until you don't feel it anymore. Over here, we've got some spices that I'm going to mix up. So in this bowl over here, I have a combination of some ground cumin, some smoked paprika, some chili powder, some ancho chili powder, which is, has more of a smoky, mild you know, heat to it. It's really good. Some coriander and some salt. So I'll take my spoon and I'm just gonna mix everything together. I like to take just a little bit of that and spread some on top of the meat and use it like a little rub. And then I'll take all the spices and pour them into the sauce. And then we're gonna add one can. I have some organic diced fire roasted tomatoes. And I'm gonna pour that in. Now for a little heat, I like to add a little bit of the chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. This is completely optional. Uh, I'm a wimp, so I use just a little bit of the sauce. I use about a half a teaspoon, which is plenty of heat for, for all of us. But if you like a lot of heat, go ahead and add a, a good tablespoon. That'll fire it up for you. So we'll just stir this so it's nicely combined. 
and then I'm gonna add some lime juice. That's my last addition here. So I'm putting the whole lime in. So I give that a stir, and now all we have to add is the meat. Now we're ready to add our meat to this. And we'll just place it right in there. It's okay if it's not totally submerged. And I'm gonna set this to pressure cook. Well, first let's put the top on, right? Put the top on, make sure that the uh, vent is in the right position, and then we'll hit pressure cook. And I'm gonna let this go for an hour. So while the beef's cooking in the Instant Pot, now it's time to work on our tostada shells. I'm making those from scratch, I'm not making the tortillas, but I'm gonna be cooking the shells in oil on the stove myself, because it doesn't take much to do. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a small, very small frying pan, so that way I don't have to use too much oil, and fill that with some avocado oil, and then we're gonna put that over, say, medium heat. I want that oil to be hot before we put our tortillas in. So how do you know when your oil's hot enough? Well, you just put it part of your tortilla in there and if it bubbles up right away go ahead and lay it right in and then just continue to flip the tortilla over frequently so that it doesn't burn because it's not in very much oil they're done when they get nice and crispy and the oil stops bubbling now I overcooked the first three that I made and I got better at it as I went on and made three more okay so it's time for chef joke number two here we go what do you call a cow that has two legs on one side of his body that are shorter than the other side? Lean beef. <laughs> so now I wanna get into my hack. I told you I was gonna give you a hack for making refried beans pretty darn quick without having to you know, spend hours doing it. Although I've got a couple of really good you know, refried bean recipes from scratch that are just dynamite that you might wanna check out and I'll leave links for it down below in the description. But if you choose not to use that you know, slower technique, I've got this quick one for you and the hack I discovered the other day was just, it just pat myself on the back. I thought it was really good. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a can of pinto beans, not refried beans now, whole pinto beans. I'm gonna to toss them in the old saucepan, and I'm gonna add some of the oil that we use to fry up the tortillas with. I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic powder to it, and then I'm gonna take the sauce from my dish today that has all those spices and has the flavor from the beef, and we're gonna put some of that into our beans, and voila, we're gonna let that simmer for you know just a few minutes and mash them up, and boy, are they delicious. So that's my hack, and it's really good. So just remember to turn off the heat when you mash the beans, that way they won't burn. And you can always thin them out if they get too thick with some water. Now I'm gonna make up a little bit of dressing to go in my tostada because a tostada is basically like a little salad. And in my view, it needs a little bit of dressing to just perk things up and just make it super delicious. So I'm gonna take some avocado oil again, equal amounts, and I'm gonna pour it in my blender because we wanna just really mix this up. And then I'm gonna put an equal amount of apple cider vinegar in there. We're gonna add some garlic powder. Now what the garlic powder is gonna do is gonna make this nice and creamy when we blend it up. And then we're gonna add some salt, a nice little pinch of salt in there and some black pepper. Look at this, nice and creamy. So now it's just a matter of prepping up any ingredients that you want to add to your tostada. So as far as the lettuce goes, I like using romaine. It's a little bit more crunchy than say a mixed green salad where the, the leaves are just very soft. So I like a little crunch in my salad. So I'll just chop up a little bit of romaine here and have that ready to go. I've got some grated cheese over here. And you know, I like to use uh, the kind of cheese I'm using mild, or actually it's medium cheddar. And I like to, grate it myself because I don't like to buy it already grated because it has all those, you know, mold inhibitors and, you know, different things in there that I just, I just want my cheese. I've got some cherry tomatoes here that I'll just cut in half and put those on, but you are free to put whatever vegetables or anything on your tostada part, the salad part that you want. Our shredded beef is done, so I'll release the pressure until it's safe to open. Here's our shredded beef and we'll take it out and I'll place it on a cutting board and you can remove any excess fat that you see while you're doing this. I think two forks works great in shredding the beef. I've heard some people using a hand mixer. And then we'll place the shredded beef back into the sauce to make sure it's nice and hot.
let's put these tostadas together. We're going to start off with a nice layer of beans. Place a little cheese on there if you want. And next comes the beef. Now make sure you drain it a bit so it doesn't make your tostada soggy. Look at that beautiful beef. Next, we'll place a handful of our lettuce on there. And we'll add a few of those tomatoes. And now we'll add some of that delicious dressing that's going to bring it all together. And we'll add a little squirt of some sour cream. Now I like to cut little cubes of avocado to place on the tostada as well. Then we'll finish it off with a sprinkle of cheese. All right, I'm, I'm ready to dig in and take a taste of this. So many good flavors going on here, guys. That meat with that sauce is dynamite. Adding that sauce to the beans really adds some flavor to them so that they're spectacular. And everything is just, you know, you got the avocado in there, it's nice and creamy. The dressing is a must. I really want to insist that you do that when you make this because it, it just takes it over the top. Now, another great recipe to go with this would be my guacamole recipe. I'm going to leave a link for you right over here. You can make that. It would be fantastic on this or just by itself. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment and we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.